again, everybody. I'm going to talk about science class. I like science class. Do you guys like science class? I like science class. Anyways, in my science class, we were learning about surface tension. Surface tension happens because water molecules are strongly attracted to each other. This allows some insects to walk on water. It lets that weird bubble thing happen at the top of the glass, and it's why belly flops hurt so much. So my science teacher told us that surface tension in water molecules is pretty strong, but if you add soap, it breaks the surface tension. But she told us that one teacher used to teach his students about this by taking a water skater, you know, those little bugs that can walk on water, and put them in water and then put soap in the water. The water skater would then sink into the water. He saved the bug, but that got me wondering. The water skater was okay, physically, but was it really okay, mentally? Just imagine him talking to his water skater therapist. I was just walking when when all of a sudden I sunk into the ground. It, it was like it was like everything I've ever known is a lie and that it could happen again at any moment. I don't know what's real anymore, man. And his therapist is all like, "Don't worry, we'll take care of it. Just calm down." And then the therapist talks him off a cliff and he's fine. Only to have the same thing happen to him the next period when the teacher is teaching that lesson again. Can you imagine how psychologically damaging that must be? Just imagine walking down the street one day when... Huh? <laughs> My science teachers have also told me about how the Earth is spinning at like a thousand miles per hour, but we can't even feel it. And that got me wondering again. What if the Earth just all of a sudden stopped rotating? Would that send everyone flying away in one direction at a thousand miles per hour off the planet? Actually, I googled it. Turns out that something pretty close to that would actually happen. Most of the surface of the Earth would suddenly be jettisoned into space. Angular momentum is a crazy thing. I feel like people in the food industry use technical and scientific words to sell stuff. They say stuff like, oh, it's organic. Well, organic just means of, relating to, or derived from living organisms. Therefore, all things made from plants and animals are organic. So you could just slap that sticker on all the other foods. Yeah, I know that it legally means something else now, but that's stupid. You can't just steal words like that. They already have meanings. Give us our words back. At least organic foods are somewhat okay, I guess. What if food scientists actually advertised foods how they actually were really made? Ooh, this chicken was injected with hormones and lived in a warehouse its whole life. Ooh, if I eat this, my toilet will never be unclogged again. Ooh, literally none of the ingredients on this aren't from a laboratory. But that wouldn't make as much money, and we can't have that. Ugh. I guess money really is the root of all evil. It's like this. Um, hey, excuse me, yeah. What you're doing is wrong on all levels. I'm fine with that. And now I'd like to talk about some things that blow my mind. So look at the cell. If you zoom in a ton, then here's an atom. And if you zoom in even more, you see the nucleus of the atom. Well, what would happen if you kept zooming in forever? An atom's nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons. And then looking further, we now know that those particles are composed of quarks, leptons, and bosons. Well, what makes up those? And what makes up those? And on and on. Are atoms really just tiny universes in and of themselves? Are there an infinite amount of universes within my body? If so, then by that logic, does that mean there's an infinite amount of things bigger than us? Are we the atom of some cell? Some infinitely small speck? How can we ever know? Does everything include nothing? Does nothing even exist? Is there truly a place where there is nothing? How can there be if there is everything that we know? Is science just our sad and pathetic efforts to understand a minuscule amount of the observable universe that could never even amount to anything because of what we can't see and what we don't know, what we don't even know? Okay, well, good luck going to sleep tonight. Bye! Okay, end card. I actually had a science teacher in seventh grade who was, like, the best teacher ever, and she told me, Bryson, when you're rich and famous, don't forget about me. Well, I'm not famous, but anyways, hi Mrs. Vargas, you were an incredible science teacher. Okay, bye everybody.